So I'm here with Kazim Nadrim, following his 11th round TKO of a tough Frenchman, um, Thomas Deval for the AFSO world title. Uh, Kaz, how are you feeling after the uh, fight and how does it feel to be a world champion again? Oh, it feels great. Um, you know, that was the plan. Right, as, soon, as soon as I took my loss against Liam, the first thing I wanted to do was get back straight back in the ring. So uh, we've done that. Got our world title back and the journey goes forward. So how disappointed were you not getting an immediate rematch with Liam and having to go for the AFSO belt rather than go for all your belts again? Uh, at the time I was very disappointed because I, I could, me personally I couldn't see anything that would stop it so I wanted the rematch straight away. Obviously circumstances on Liam's behalf he couldn't do the rematch straight away so you know the next best option for me was to, to just fight again. Not standing still? Yeah. Um, and was this fight more about the title or the win or fight number 50 or was it just a case of you know getting back in there after the loss and exercising the demons? I think it was a bit of everything. I think more than anything it was just get back in there like I weren't discouraged one bit about uh, fighting or anything after the Leon fight. I just wanted to get back in the ring. Um, so yeah I'd say that the biggest thing was getting back in the ring and just getting back on winning ways. And I don't think that the 50th win was mentioned once in the build-up, was it? No, 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 not at all. That's what I mean. Like, me, I didn't even think about that. Um, it was just about getting back in the ring. I just thought as soon as, like, the day after the Liam fight, I was already thinking about fighting again, so. And the step up in weight to uh, uh, light well to weight? Yeah, yeah. Um, how did you find that? Super comfortable. Like, so I was walking around probably a kilo and a half, two kilos above um, the weight limit of 64.5 and it was probably the easiest weight cut I've ever done. There was no hot bath, no, um, no like cutting down massively on my food. It was literally like... Just walked into yeah, the weight. Yeah. Only 12, 13 weeks since that loss yeah. against Liam, which is like a nothing amount of time when you consider that you had a little bit of time off after the Liam loss, just to yeah. you know rest and recuperate after the long camp. Yeah. And um, and then it was mentioned that you'd be fighting Thomas Deval, who had gone a distance with um, Dylan Chima. Yeah. So you knew how strong and tough he was. Yeah. Um, it's a crazy, crazy quick amount of time to, to get back in against a tough opponent. Yeah. Did, you, did you not think to yourself maybe you needed a, like an easy touch to get back in there? No, of course not. I think, you know, you see a lot of fighters doing that. A lot of fighters will take a loss and then they'll have probably two or three easy fights to get back up. But with me, like, my plan was still the same. Fight the best out there. He got offered, I knew he was world class because he's gone 12 with Dylan, like, who I fought as well. So um, yeah, I just jumped at the chance. It was like, I didn't want no easy touches. I just, I want to fight whoever's put in front of me. And one thing I always go by is from when you're at world level, I don't think you should be like, you know, taking any easy touches. Just fight the best out there. You fight whoever's put once. in front of yeah. you, yeah. And I know you won't say it because you don't, but it was um, not the best training camp for you. Um, <laughs> um, can you tell them a little bit about that? Probably. Probably the worst fight camp I've ever had in terms of um, <laughs> illness, illnesses and um, preparation. Uh, I got ill probably about five weeks out, five, six weeks out, I was ill. I had a week off, um, just about got over it, training started up again, got ill again, which was three weeks out. Um, Again, had a week off, and then it was one of those. I just thought, like, I remember at one point thinking, I'm not going to be ready. But you weren't picking up any momentum, were you? Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. I felt like as soon as I was starting back on training, I was just getting ill again. So what was it? Like, was a cold? Uh, you had a cold? Cold, chest infection. Stomach bug. Stomach bug. Uh, a cough that I couldn't shake off. Did you ever feel like the you know, it, everything was stacked against you and it was just not meant to be for you to have this fight? At one point I did. When, when I was ill like three weeks before, or two and a half weeks before, <coughs> I was thinking, you know, like, something's telling me, just don't, don't fight. That's why I keep getting ill. I couldn't get, like, 
uh, momentum with my sprinting, uh, with my runs, with my sparring, j just with everything. So, but then it was just uh, one or two good sessions straight after, and that's it. My mentality was back, back up. Yeah. Because, I mean, if you look at it in retrospect, it's, uh, you know, everybody has bad nights at the office and everybody loses. Yeah. But two losses on the bounce would pretty much finish your career, I would imagine, yeah, yeah. at the age you're at. Yeah. Did that ever cross your mind that, nah, what if this French guy beats you? Nah, not at all. Like, I've, I've, I don't think I'd ever go into a fight thinking, what if this guy beats me? I always go into the fight, I'm going to smash this guy. So, it's like, I, even after watching his videos, watch that he went 12 hard rounds with Dylan, so, like, it's like I just I knew that I've, there's no way he can beat me. That's how I go into into every fight. So you have a dreadful training camp. You pick up a little bit of momentum nearer to the end of the camp. The yeah. fight set, the date set. You decide to go ahead with it. Yeah. And then we have some trouble actually getting the French guy here the night before. Yeah. yeah. Um, for those that don't know, uh, COVID restrictions were changed in France, uh, meaning that they had to jump through X amount of hoops to, to get over here and compete. Yeah. Um, they'd missed their flights on a Saturday morning to come over for the weigh-in. Uh, Gavin at TMA, um, you know, moved hell and high water to, 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 to make the fight happen. But we didn't know if we were going to be competing because we, the, the French guy never got in until half ten the night before. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how did that make you feel? Um, at the time I thought, again, is this another sign that this fight is not meant to happen? Um, but then on the other hand, I just said, just get him over here one way or another. Whether it's by plane, by ship, by car, just get him as long as he's here. Um, more than anything, I wanted the fight. And credit to, to Thomas Deval because he, his coach said, like, you know, they would do whatever they needed to do to get here because they were super confident of getting a victory over you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And maybe that was because of your last performance and maybe yeah. you underperformed last time or they seen a vulnerability in you last time. Yeah. But they were super confident they were coming here to take a, to take this belt home. I, th I think that's a good thing though. I think anyone fighting for world titles or fighting for any titles should be going into a fight like that. I don't think I could ever go into a fight thinking, oh, I don't know if I'm going to win this. Like, I think you have to go in thinking, no, I'm definitely going to win this. And it's good that, you know, that he came over like that. And you seen the grit and determination on the, on the night, didn't you? you like, yeah, you didn't, yeah, yeah. He, there was no quitting him at all. No, nah, not at all. There's like, some of the shots I hit him with, like I've hit other people with and they, they haven't got back up from, or they've gave up from. And he, 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 he took some big shots, especially like down to the body as well. Like I felt like some of the body shots I hit him with, a lot of people would have gone down from. Yeah, he was especially in eight hands clubs. Yeah, and he had really good resilience, didn't he? Like yeah, it yeah. hurt him, but he kind of bounced back. So, okay, so we get him in the ring. How did the fight unfold to you? How did you feel in the fight from the early rounds through to mid rounds to late rounds? Um, well, after watching watching his fight, watching his style, um, I knew he was going to be really tight. It's going to be hard to nail clean, um, but I expected him to be a bit more upright than what it was, but I felt like every time we got close, he was ducking and diving really low, which means I, I was finding it hard to start land, uh, to, to land clean on him. I think as a, I think I should have kept, like, you know, kept my distance with him when he was trying to get close and get low and teed him off a little bit more, but I kind of found that momentum as the fight went on and then I felt the later rounds that were going in, like I felt like I was on the, the up and he was on the down. Then I think, you know, like what like what we said before the fight that this guy, because of how tough he is, you have to dent him, start denting him early. And I felt like every round I, I was denting him a bit more and chipping away, chipping away, chipping away until I chopped the tree down. <laughs> so remember you come back, I think it was the end of the fifth round. Yeah and you leant over and I thought, as soon as you lean, lean over, <laughs> I know it's not good news. And you yeah. said, I think I broke my hand. Yeah. Um, talk us through that. Um, I remember it was towards the end of the fifth round. Uh, again, I had him on the ropes. So I felt like I was just, like lining him up with the jab. And um, I remember swinging a big up, but, and he, he was ducking down into it at the same time. So I caught him like on his forehead. 
and straight away I just felt something in my thumb that didn't feel right which naturally I thought, okay, I, I broke my thumb. Because you've been there before, haven't you? You yeah, broke your yeah, hand yeah. before in a couple of fights. So it's like, it, it felt the same. So obviously I'll come back to the corner and let you know. I think I broke my thumb, but we're halfway through a fight, so yeah, yeah, yeah. we don't stop doing it. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know coming back to me in the corner, if you broke yeah, anything, you don't get like a, a, a big hug and yeah, lots yeah, of yeah, compassion. Yeah. It's like, well, son, you got to work. you got to find a new, a new way to win. Yeah, yeah. But you, you kept throwing the right hand through the contest. Did you think at any point that you were making your hand worse when you were throwing your shots? I, 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 I don't think about that at the time. I think whatever pain I'm going through now, it'll be worth it after. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. As long as my hand don't drop off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it'll be worth it. still saying that we still probably would have glued it back on. But, um, so since the contest, obviously you stopped him in the <coughs> 11th. 11th round. And since the contest, you've had your hand checked out. What did they say about that? Um, well, it's suspected uh, that I've ruptured a tendon and I'm happy that nothing's broke. I've had, I've had it x-rayed, nothing's broke. Um, I think it's just tendon damage. And the, the good thing is I haven't snapped anything. Um, just think a few weeks I've rest and I'll be back. And you're waiting for a, a MRI on it now? O ultrasound. An ultrasound, okay. Yeah, so I should get that in the next few days and then I'll know exactly where I'm at with that. So now let me get this right, we've had 51 fights, yeah. 50 wins, 30 knockouts, 5 times 2 weight professional world champion. Yeah. Out of all of that, what makes you most proud, listening to all those accolades? Um, right now, I don't know how I feel once I've retired, but right now, it was this fight. Okay. Because I felt like I went from the lowest in my career to back up to the top. I felt like throughout my career from once I once I stepped up the ladder to the top and I kind of stayed there and I always felt like well that's where I belong at the top of the tree like I don't want to be just a branch I want to be the top of the tree and I felt like after the fight with Liam I dropped back down to reality yeah <laughs> and then um, I think it was just the whole thing like you know like loads of people were expecting I, I wouldn't, well, yeah, I'd say loads of people were expecting me to say, okay, I've achieved enough, that's it. You know, it's, it's someone else's time, but no, like, I didn't think that at all. It, for me, it was, now get me back in that ring, get me back up there, prove to everyone why I'm the man. I, I won't say who, but I had, like, numerous messages come through and, and speaking to people in person, saying, you know, he's done enough. Yeah, he's yeah. done enough, he's 33 years old now, you know, 32 <laughs> years old. Um, he's achieved all he needs to achieve in the sport, why go on? And, like, we're a little bit shocked that you wanted the rematch with Liam straight away and maybe yeah. feeling like you were on the slide. And I was, I, I was saying to I, I couldn't express myself enough to say, listen, it was a bad night at the office with Liam. Yeah. You know, nothing but props and respect to Liam and his team for, for getting the win. But we didn't see any of that deterioration in camp, did we? No, no, no. And, um, and I don't even think like punch resistance or anything like that is even in question. I think it was literally just a bad night at the office and yeah. Liam done what he needed to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, and going into this fight, I think it made it more interesting for people because like you, you just turn up and you win, don't you? That's yeah, what you've yeah. done all the way through your career. Yeah. And Liam's shown that you are human and you, yeah, you yeah. can get hurt and you can get stuck yeah. and I think that's what made this fight more interesting every time the French guy got close it was like everyone held their breath yeah, yeah. Um, but that's the thing it was like the crazy thing is I don't think I've ever felt a strong during a fight mm -hmm. like I felt like super strong in every way I felt like even when the video comes out and everyone would see like even when we're getting in close I felt physically stronger than him I felt like I was hitting harder than him I felt like, you know, I was, I was, I was letting go um, and I think a lot of people expected me just to be on the back foot and just pick him off and scrape a win, but I don't, I don't, that's not my fighting style, is it? My, my fighting style is hit him, hit him hard, hit him often, keep hitting him, hit and him did, again. <laughs> did you feel in the fight that you were going to get the stoppage? Like early, early doors, you know how tough he is, you've yeah. seen him go 12 with Dylan. Um, and 
did you feel like you were going to get the stoppage or did you feel like it was going to be a, a, a long night at the office? No, well, I, I expected I, ex I expected a, a long night as in because of how tough he is. But during the fight, I, I could see the dents. I could see like, you know, facial expressions, reactions, hitting him with shots and seeing him wince. I, I could see that during the fight. So it's like, I knew that as, as the fight's going on and I'm getting stronger, I could see him getting weaker and he's like, I knew going from, coming back after the 10th, I felt like in the 10th, he, I had him on, on the way down. And then I knew in the next few rounds, I'm, I'm gonna stop him, he ain't gonna see the final bell. Crazy though, isn't it? Because like, we talk about there was no quitting him. He was cut in the second round. Quite yeah. a bad cut yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. And um, I think he took a couple of counts en route to being stuck. Yeah. But he was like, he was right in your face, weren't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. All night yeah. long. Yeah, that's the thing. And even, like, even though I did expect that, there was some, some shots that I hit him with and I thought, Oh, you're still standing. Yeah. Like, I, like there was times where I did expect him to go down, and he didn't. But that just means I just hit him more. So, you know, it's, it's one of those that I, I, I knew I was gonna win. Like as the fight was going on, and it was just about when I was gonna stop him. And I, and I, because I, I could see them chinks in him, and I think because I just exploited that and just stayed on and kept that pressure on him, and then. The inevitable happen. Yeah, yeah. So, you're back as a world champion now. Nobody wants to go out on a loss. Yeah. Uh, AFSO world champion, two weight world champion, five times world champion. Is now the right time to call it a day? No, of course, I need my belts back first. Yeah, I thought you were going to say that. Once I, once I get my belts back, you know, I'll still probably fight, but um, that's the thing, like, you know, even that, like what you said, a lot of people would have either just left it after the last and say oh, I've done enough already and you know I've been fighting for this long and I've achieved everything I want to achieve but with me I feel like there's always I always want more and the thing is now even though I've got this world title back Liam's still there so I, I still need to go and get him so it has to be Liam next it has to be Liam has to be Liam get all my belts back and it's like what I said at the end of the fight I gave him a fair crack um, I didn't have to put all my titles on the line, but I chose to, and I feel like it's only right he should do the same back for me. From fighter to fighter, that is. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Like I said, I, I had even a few weeks before fighting the, um, I, I had the choice whether I would just want to put one title on the line, but I said no. Nah. I said it's, it's all or nothing, and I, I think that's the best way to be as a fighter. So I think I done that for him. So I think it's only right he does that set, he does that for me. And do, do you think, like in your heart, do you feel like, I, I look at Liam and Howie as brave as they come, yeah. you know, in terms of when, before they fought you, they were coming over to fight an unbeaten fighter yeah. in his backyard, you know, by everybody's reckoning, like one of the best pound, pound fighters in the world, if not the best, didn't phase him in the slightest, come over, stopped you, took your belt, do you feel like that they would stall or not give you that fight? But well, I can't see why they wouldn't. Because if, if they come over last time and you know they, they've done all that, then as a fighter and as if he really believes he's the best, he's got no reason not to fight again. And would you consider you, fight, yeah, would yeah. you consider yourself? And is is an interesting one. Would you consider yourself to be an underdog going into that rematch? I think I'd have to be. I think I think probably one of the only times, like a handful of times, but I think I would definitely have to be the underdog in that fight. Because he, before he beat me fair and square, uh, he's the man. So would it change anything going to Ireland? Like would would that make a difference in terms of um, how much chance you've got to win? No, like it's, it's like I said, I said, you know, like he's the champion, so yeah, he, he can call the shots, but as long as he puts all them titles on the line the same way I did, I'd, I'd fight him anyway, whether it's over there, whether it's over here. You know, like, the, the, the main thing about TMA is that you know you're getting a fair crack, doesn't matter where you come, you can come from the other side of the world. You know you're fighting on the TMA show, you know you're going to get a fair crack. And, and Liam's proved that. He's, yeah, he's, done yeah. it, he's done it with Dylan, he's he done it in our fight, so 
so I think it's only fair if, if that he does the same back for me. Um, if they can have all the titles on the line and get everything sorted, I'd fight him over there. If they can't fight him, I'd fight him anyway, to be honest. I think the fact that he's come over here and beat, Liam, uh, beat Dylan on points um, in a close fight, yeah. um, and he's come over here and was treated well and stopped you, yeah. Like, I don't think you'd have any reservations fighting over here if the fight couldn't logistically happen in Ireland. Yeah, yeah, I, d I don't see why not. I don't see why not. And I think, you know, like as, as, a, as a champion, if you consider yourself a, like a, a real champion, you know, you, you, considering what I've achieved leading up to that point and for what I've done with all my bouts now, I think it's only fair he'd done the same back. Yeah. And, and again, a lot of people after the first loss, when like the day after you phoned me and you like, Neil, just get me the rematch. Yeah. And I was like, Kaz, can't you just have a day off? You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but when it was spoke about that you wanted to fight Liam again, again, a lot of people were saying, Neil, it's not a good fight for him. Yeah, it's yeah. not a good fight. Liam's a young, hungry, on fighter on the rise. Kaz has probably seen his best days, you know, it's not a good fight stylistically, it's not a good fight for Kaz. Um, what would you say to those people? I think it's, a, you know, people who ain't actually in there, like that everyone can, everyone has an opinion and everyone can have an opinion, like, you know, that's fair enough. But um, I believe, I know what I can do, I know what I'm capable of, I know I can beat him. And I will beat him, that's the thing, I will beat him. Like, and if I had any doubts myself, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be doing it. I wouldn't be fighting. It's something that you said as well, and it's like, that's what champions do. And it's yeah. like, and even if, even if you fight him and he does beat you again, yeah, yeah. You, like, you'll try to, to yeah, reverse yeah, yeah. the last vote, it's like, um, you, you're one of your big heroes, Nassim Hamed. Yeah, yeah. And it burnt you the fact that he never tried to reverse a loss against Barrera. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's like, you know what? Another thing, like, doesn't matter what anyone says and how a fighter is, it only takes one punch. Yeah, yeah. It takes one punch that could change everything. Like, I, I say that to our fighters now. I say, you know, you could be winning every second of every round, get hit with one punch, fight done. So I, I felt in the Liam fight that it was kind of like a bit of a, uh, you were both s like swinging for the hills. Yeah. You were both landing. I think that you were both were hurt in the contest even before the stoppage. And I think it could have, it could have just as easily been Liam yeah, getting yeah, knocked yeah. out on that. Yeah. In the rematch, is it the same kind of fight? you hoping that you land before he does next time? No, I think in the, in the rematch it's, it's a fight. Whatever happens, happens. I won't say too much, um, but it's a fight. I'll, I'll, I'll show my experience. I'm sure he'll show his experience. But his confidence has got to be yeah, going yeah. through the roof since yeah. that, that win. His, his confidence, it should, it should be. But the, at the same time, my confidence is now back up there. My, my confidence was never knocked. Even like you said, the day after the, the Liam fight, I weren't thinking about, oh yeah, I just lost. And I was just thinking, okay, get me back in that ring. Yeah. Like, that, wait, I think a lot that of shot, fighters would have avoided it. I think rather. that shocked so many people, the way that you process that defeat. Yeah. And it's, I think, because I'm a bit older now, and I think like I've been around for so long, I think I can understand things a bit more. I think I would have taken it different if I was 21. Yeah. And I think I would have like processed it different, but I think that, like, you know, I understand the fight game, I've been in the fight game for so long, and, uh, and I understand, it doesn't matter what you do in the fight, it, do, it does take one punch to change your whole fight. We see it happen, happening in boxing all the time, and it's one of those, I think, like, you know, it's part of the game. Yeah, I had a long winning streak, you know, winning forever and ever, um, took my first loss. But I just bounced straight back from it, straight back in the ring, straight back at world level, stepped up away, got the words out of back, I'm back. Yeah, I've got, I've got to say, like, you know, I've seen a lot of things in this sport, but that, in, in, your attitude and the way that you process the loss and the way that you cope with that, 
impress the sucks off me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I've, I've seen, I've been around fighters for a long time. Um, and you, you always see a fighter when he's built on confidence, his own, yeah, yeah, own yeah. self-confidence, and when that takes a knock, you don't know how that's going to affect him. Even until fight night, yeah. even until that first bell when you fought Thomas, it was like, what has he's going to turn up tonight? Yeah, is yeah. he going to be gun shy? Is, you know, um, is he going to take risks? Is he going to be as aggressive as he was? Is he going to go back behind the jab? And I think the beauty of the fight against Deval was you kind of like showing a little bit of everything in, yeah, in, yeah, in the yeah. fight. Yeah. And I think learning things about yourself, even, you know, in your 50th first fight, it's, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's quite impressive. Yeah. That's the thing that most people, like you said, most people probably would have taken it different or reacted different from it. But like I said, my, my confidence went up from that. I, I didn't think, oh, I, not one point do I sit there and think, oh no, Liam's a better fight than me, I can't beat him. I just think it's a fight. Same way he won the last one, I'm, I'm gonna win the next one. And isn't it great so, as well, like going into that last fight, there was a lot of hype surrounding the fight and it was like the biggest fight in full contact. To a degree, this fight is even bigger and better because there was a lot of people that had you as a strong uh, favorite to win that fight. Yeah. Because Liam's young and you know, he's, um, he hadn't fought for a long time and um, he'd only had one professional fight at that kind of level. Um, but he, he kind of just ripped up the script, didn't he? And yeah, I think yeah, going yeah. into this next fight, it's even bigger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's even bigger. Yeah. It's got the world watching again. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I think it's a fight that Full Contact absolutely needs yeah, right yeah. now. And that's why, like, that, that was another thing. That's why, like, I gave him his full props. He came over, he done the job. I can't knock him for anything. Um, you know, he was confident. He showed his confidence, he, he, he done what he said he was going to do, um, you know, I, I can't knock him and from, from that point, like the one rule that I always stand by and I say this to people is, from the point you step in the ring, there's, there's no excuse, no one should have any excuses after a fight, so it's like in the Thomas fight, if like I, I, I didn't turn around and say, oh, oh, I hurt my thumb in the fifth round, so really I would have knocked him out in six. But I had to only knock him out in 11 because I hurt my hand. Like, yeah, yeah. There's no excuses, it's a fight. Anything can happen in a fight. So, looking forward then, when when would you like that Liam fight to happen? Next. <laughs> Whenever. Whenever, wherever. Just next. So Liam, you've heard what the man's got to say. Pick up that phone, speak to TMA. Let's get this fight on. Let's do this. Us. <laughs>